So of course we're going to check out some of the features of the gun and see what it can do. But of course before we start, for all you safety Nazis out there, we are going to do a quick safety check. We're good. Today we're reviewing the Rykol 14 short over and under shotgun with screw in chokes. And I do love the name because it's so close to recoil and with shotguns that's just truth in advertising. It's a double triggered uh, style uh, with 14 inch barrels chambered in 3 inch, uh, 12 gauge obviously and it weighs about 2.95 kilograms or about six and a half pounds. Overall length is 31 inches. Now the the gun does come with a number of screw-in chokes however it's also worth noting that the style of choke is the Benelli Beretta mobile choke series uh, so you can buy additional chokes uh, that are of the Benelli slash Beretta line like some of the Carson or, or other manufacturers chokes. This particular gun was purchased at Corwin Arms in British Columbia. That's uh, Their website is corwin-arms.com. Uh, they now sell the same gun in a single trigger with selectable barrels as well as a all black model. As you can see the fit and finish of the gun is pretty good. These are the double trigger configurations, uh, pretty standard. We found that the forward trigger was a little heavy uh, and the rear trigger was a lot lighter. Both triggers are a little gritty but to be honest with a shotgun they're both perfectly usable and I didn't have a problem with either one. They have a lot of nice artwork on the gun as well. Here you can see the wolf on the side that's on both sides by the way. Uh, and here you can see on the trigger and also the duck in flight motif that they have. And here's one of my favorite aspects of the gun, the rib and sighting system. As you can see it has a double fiber optic in the rear and a front red fiber optic post. The fiber optic light tubes are very small. They don't gather a lot of light but they do gather more than enough to do the job and in very low light conditions it still makes a great sort of V configuration and I found it was pretty easy to acquire targets even in next to no light conditions. In a lot of short barrel shotguns one of the biggest problems is they just put a bead on and as you shorten the barrel that actually increases the height of the point of aim and you tend to wind up with a shotgun that'll fire two and a half feet above your target the uh, the recall just came up perfect and the sight alignment when it came up to your shoulder was perfect and it's dead bang on so that's really nice in a shorter shotgun also the length of pull is a little bit shorter than a lot of traditional shotguns it's about 13 13 and a half inches which was very comfortable for me and also would suit smaller stature shooters uh, a little bit better than some of the traditional configurations Here's a picture of the front red post and uh, as you can see it's not very big but it is big enough to do the job. Now here I wanted to give you a little bit of an idea of the actual size of the gun in hand. It feels great. It's very small, it's easy to maneuver around but it actually feels a little bit larger than it really is. It's got good weight and balance. The 14 inches is probably the perfect length for this gun. It balances right at the break open pivot point and it's extremely easy to maneuver but it feels very solid uh, and controllable when you bring it up to your shoulder. If you were using this for a defense gun, for camp or for your home, it's extremely easy to maneuver in and out of a tent or around your house and holding it in the sort of police style one handed would be very easy to do. It's actually not that uncomfortable to shoot one handed either. So from that point of view, it's a great size. Now let's talk about a few of the things I didn't like. The first time I opened the gun, right here you can see there's the pivot post and then there's a channel that's cut out to allow the gun to, to pivot forward. And right at that point I found some curly cues of metal from the milling process. Also the edge where the, the cut came together was really rough and while it didn't really Im 
impede the functioning of the gun it was really kind of sloppy and I, I found that I had to take it out break off the little curly cues and give it a good polishing to uh, to smooth out some of the minor roughness in addition here you you could see we're looking right down one of the choke tubes and right here you can see that where they cut the slots for the wrench to take the choke tubes in and out it's been bent in a little bit this was bad or worse on on most of the choke tubes again it took me maybe two minutes three minutes to to clean them up but there's no call for that that's just a little bit sloppy having said that it cleaned up very quickly and after that it was fine so while I was very happy with the exterior fit and finish internally there was a little bit of sloppiness that uh, that cleaned up very quickly but I was a little disappointed to see all I would say is if you're buying one of these take it apart and give it a little a uh, little polish and a little touch up just to make sure that it's it's perfect but again none of it actually affected the functioning of the gun so let's take it to the range and see how it does you'll notice in this video that we're shooting the bottom barrel cylinder and the top barrel improved cylinder and the cylinder is definitely wide open as you can see here I managed to hit two pop cans with my first shot extraction is also very positive Let's watch that again in slow motion. Yeah, basically this gun doesn't just eject the shells, they just F off into low earth orbit. We had no trouble putting them into the box of the pickup truck about 20 feet back, and that made cleanup a lot easier. In the end, we just amused ourselves by trying to hit each other with the ejected shells. Anyway, now that we knew the gun could shoot, and shoot safely, it was time to put it to work and see what it could really do. One of my favorite ways of doing that is with this. This is a do-all hot box. It's a square self-healing target that bounces around when you shoot it and the idea is to hit it a second time or third or fourth if you're using a regular shotgun before it stops moving. It's a great way to sort of train for fast moving ground animals like squirrels or rabbits or anything like that and it's also a great way to see how fast you can get a gun back on target so we thought it would be a great way to see how fast we could get this gun to come back on target for a second follow-up shot the gun actually did really well and we found it was no trouble to get right back on target for a quick second shot the gun points extremely easily now if you look carefully both of Dakota's first shots were a little high you can see it in this picture and in the next one I think part of that was just Dakota getting comfortable with where the gun's hitting, but I did notice that the bottom barrel, which was the full cylinder, was tending to hit just a tiny bit high. Now as soon as we realized that, we compensated and it was really no problem. After that it was hitting fine. Clays were no trouble, uh, singles and doubles were hitting right away, very easy to point the gun. So we decided to move on to a little gratuitous fruit violence for the next round. The melon was no match for this shotgun, but we wanted to try out some slugs, and there was only one fruit we would consider for such a difficult task. That was the durian. This is a durian. They are large. They are very heavy. They are harder than flesh. They are spiky, and those spikes are sharp. Three people were injured just getting the thing out of the store. They smell like turpentine and old socks on the inside. Just to make it more interesting, this one is still partially frozen. This is the kind of fruit that you see and think, I should really load it into a catapult and hurl it at the walls of my enemy. If you were a girl fruit and you really wanted to honk your parents off, this is the fruit you would bring home to supper. So we thought it would be a perfect ch uh, test for our, our Challenger slugs, which are 1 and 1 8 ounce lead alloy uh, slugs moving at about... 1600 feet per second and we wanted to see what kind of accuracy we could get and what kind of damage we could do That is a tough fruit. This is the exit wound 
it's a little lower in the back it's a little higher in the front which we expected considering we were shooting with the lower barrel the slugs certainly seem to like that open choke the accuracy was dead smack center at the front of the durian and penetration was impressive considering the thing is still mostly frozen the slugs aren't particularly pleasant to shoot but they're not going to be pleasant to shoot out of any shotgun and they certainly have an awful lot of stopping power I was very pleased with the accuracy and although further testing at long ranges will be necessary initially my feeling is is that this is going to be able to reach out quite a ways for a shotgun and still hit the target with authority of course the durian did survive so we tried a little buckshot we continued testing with various fruits and other targets unfortunately we lost a fair bit of footage due to some of our equipment being damaged when the wind blew it over but we had a lot of fun and we became very comfortable with the gun this was one of my favorite shots watch the top of the pineapple it flies through the air and comes to rest standing straight up I think this was a stunt pineapple <laughs> stupid pineapples anyway some final thoughts on the gun the half inch recoil pad it comes with is a hockey puck uh, it could definitely be swapped out for a limb saver or decelerator or similar pad to reduce recoil although I have to say out of the box the recoil isn't bad at all I've definitely shot a lot of shotguns that were worse and I haven't shot a lot of shotguns that were much better so you could definitely reduce the recoil but you don't need to you can also use gauge reducers to shoot 20 gauge or 410 shells out of this gun which is great if you're taking recoil sensitive shooters with you or children or something along those lines I bought this gun for $617 from Corwin Arms and I honestly feel it was a good value if it had not had some of the minor flaws I would probably say it was an amazing value but with all the features that come with it the raised rib the good fit the uh, the ejectors all of the other things that are normally only found in higher end shotguns I have to say for six hundred dollars this is a pretty good deal this gun would be excellent for bear defense camp defense uh, home defense it's going to be great for shooting rabbits and grouse and other similar shorter range game probably not what you want for goose hunting but other than that it's a great truck gun and it'll even bring down a deer with the right slugs so I'm definitely going to say I'm happy with my purchase. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comment box and I'll try and get to them as soon as I can. In the meantime, remember to get out there and make some noise and burn some powder yourself. Take care.